Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to EK News special about the Iridium Next satellite constellation. Derived from the second most dense metal known to exist, Iridium was founded to provide global mobile phone communication from outer space. The innovative project started development in 1986 when mobile phones were a privilege for the rich and the general public was using telephone boxes on the go. Mobile connectivity was and is still achieved using ground-based antennas, which were great in cities because of the excellent infrastructure. Quite the opposite was the case outside of larger cities however, which caused frustration. Traveling from A to B you would often find yourself unavailable for anyone to talk and the rate at which new antennas were built to cover the whole globe was not very promising. At this point it could have taken many decades to establish a worldwide wireless communication network. This is where Iridium came into play, a constellation consisting of initially thought 77 operational satellites, hence the name Iridium, in a low earth orbit. However, it quickly became apparent that only 66 satellites spread over 6 planes are needed to fulfill the goal to cover the whole planet. Unlike military communication from geostationary satellites, Iridium would not have to face the long signal traveling distances causing noticeable delays and confusion. Development was finished 10 years later in 1996 and the satellites were launched soon after. The technology has meanwhile progressed at an exponential rate. Mobile phones got smaller, better, cheaper and the cellular connectivity on the ground became almost ubiquitous much sooner than expected even in developing countries. But this is not all, in the late 1990s digital communication was on the rise and quickly replaced its inferior analog counterpart. Iridium was doomed and had to file bankruptcy in 1999 with only 20,000 customers worldwide. The service continued and a new entity was founded which today focuses on more niche markets in crisis areas but also on sea and in the air where you just can depend on ground based systems. Now in 2017 the first 10 satellites of the new Iridium Next constellation were recently launched on top a Falcon 9 rocket. Over the course of the next two years more and more satellites will be added until the old constellation is entirely replaced. As mentioned the goal are 66 operational satellites in space with at least one in spare per plane. A few more satellites will be held back in stock on ground to wait for a good opportunity sharing a ride to space with others. In fact just yesterday Iridium announced a partnership with NASA to launch 5 additional satellites by the end of 2018. The Iridium Next satellites are almost identical and I say almost because each of them also acts like a host for a 54 kg payload. Each satellite can spare up to 50 of its total 2200 watts of power with it, which is an additional stream of revenue for Iridium. Pretty clever actually. All Iridium Next satellites will orbit in a highly inclined polar orbit at an altitude of 780 km. Communication wise they are equipped with different kinds of antennas for different purposes. On each side facing towards other satellites are a total of 4 dishes. Two of them are fixed while the others can be tilted. That makes sense because the satellites in the same orbital plane in front and in the back don't move relative to the satellite while the ones in other planes do. These dishes allow the satellites to communicate with each other and benefit from so called network effects. Should one lose track of a ground station for example it can still deliver its services by relaying the signals over its neighbors. Speaking of ground stations, there are two separate dishes which are made exactly for that. Both can be tilted and ensure that switching between one ground station to another happens smoothly. The main communication link to its customers is provided by a so called phased array antenna. To understand what it is and its benefit over other antennas let me first tell you how a regular one works. Such a stick or omnidirectional antenna meaning in every direction spreads the signal as the name indicates in every direction. Here a little simulation of such a radio wave traveling through space. This technique is great for applications like Wi-Fi for example but in space you want to point your signal towards earth and not towards ET because ET is not a paying customer. To direct a radio signal in a certain direction disc shaped mirrors are used. While not looking like mirrors to our eyes they act as such for radio frequencies. This is because metals like aluminium have a lot of free electrons zipping around its atoms which get excited by electromagnetic waves. Electrons have an electric field surrounding them and an incoming electromagnetic wave like a radio wave causes them to move. As you might have learned in physics a moving electric field causes a magnetic field which in the end results in a wave being generated by the electron which is an exact copy of the wave it got hit by. This might sound strange but there is enough material out there to read if you really want to understand why that happens. Important to know is that this reflection can be manipulated by shaping the surface of the mirror. To showcase that I made an animation in an earlier video. 
On the right you can see how I warp the surface and how that warp changes the reflection of the red ball. Like this you can basically steer your beam and shape it in the way you like. A major downside of such dishes is that this shape is static. It doesn't change anymore. This works for satellites in geostationary orbits which always point the dishes towards the same areas. Satellite constellations like Iridium Next on the other hand have to adapt their signal to the ground they are currently flying over. More populated areas need a little more signal strength than mountain sites for example, because busy regions have more competing radio signals. Instead of using one strong antenna and a dish, many weaker ones are placed on a flat surface in a two dimensional array. In the case of Iridium Next there are 48 of these, which can all fire the signals individually. However, they are not used to send entirely different signals, but the same, just a little shifted in time. It sounds a little counterintuitive, but having many small signals firing off at slightly different time has the same effect like a mirror. When you think about it, a dish does nothing else. The signal is the same, but it shifts a little in time, which in the end causes a more narrow beam. A shift in time of a wave is also called a phase shift, hence the name phase array antenna. It cannot only form a narrow beam, but do everything a dish can in a much more compact form factor. Firing off the signals one after another, one can even steer the beam to the sides. This is the big advantage of a dish, the beam can adapt to every situation. I hope you now know a little more about Iridium Next and think this was enough input for a single video. In the end as always a big shout out to my patrons, who support my monthly crowdfunding campaign. Thanks a lot and if you want to contribute as well, simply follow the link in the description. Ok, that shall conclude episode 73 and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.